Welcome to this presentation on uh, stress related issues and I will be talking today about doming and diaperism and how stress can be linked with such problems. So today's topic is we need to understand about this term doming or diaperism. Think of there are two fluids kept fluid 1 and over that fluid 2. These fluids do not mix with each other so they are the immiscible fluid for example oil and water. And here fluid 1 has a density of rho 1 and the fluid 2 has a density of rho 2. Now in nature several possibilities are there. For example, we can have rho 1 equal to rho 2, rho 1 more than rho 2 and rho 1 less than rho 2. In case rho 1 is more than rho 2 that means a denser fluid at the bottom and a lighter fluid at the top and they are immiscible in that case it is a stable condition. These fluids will remain in this manner for a long time. On the other hand if the situation is such that rho 2 is denser than rho 1 then over time the, dense, the fluid 2 will start moving downward and the lighter fluid will start moving upward. How can I explain it? Imagine the situation where there is kerosene layer here and over that is a water layer. There is a bucket full of kerosene and I start pouring water. Then what will happen? Water will move down and kerosene will move upward and it will lead to doming or diaperism in the nature. So how it will look like? fluid 1 will move upward and fluid 2 will move downward. This kind of geometry a typical anticlinal or antiformal which is produced and of domal geometry such a structure is known as the, a dome or a diapere. The one of the best examples of dome or diapere can be salt domes or salt diapiers. And taking an example from the Persian Gulf region where we have more than 200 salt domes. What has happened there in the past is that there was first a salt layer deposited and over that limestone was deposited. When the start of Holocene that means around 10,000 years back this was the situation. Now since the density of limestone is more than that of the density of the salt, so salt started moving up in this manner giving rise to salt domes on diapiers. Two of the best examples are Namakdan and Hormoz. There is another spelling here Hormoz or H O R M U Z Hormoz. Now in this case of salt dome geometry this part of the dome which is connected with what we can call as a mother layer this portion can be called as a stem and with time this dome moves upward and this stem can go thin and thin and at one point this stem can get detached from the mother layer producing this kind of geometry. Okay. Now not just salt but it can also be mud leading to mud dome. There are reports of also anorthosite domes etc. where the same mechanism works. We are going to see how the concept of stress can be applied in explaining the doming and diaperism of this nature. By the way, the salt dome, the example that I am giving does not exist in India. We have salt deposition in the run of Kutch, but over that salt there is no such case of another layer coming which is heavier 
and the salt moves upward, we do not have such examples from the Indian terrain. Now let us look at the involvement of stress in this mechanism. Think of a hollow cylinder and inside that we are keeping a smaller hollow cylinder. And in this outer cylinder, we keep a fluid of density rho 2 and in the inside hollow cylinder, we keep a fluid of density rho 1. So, that is for the fluid 1 and this one is for the fluid 2. If rho 1 is equal to rho 2, in that case, fluids will not move, it is a stable condition. But in case rho 2 is more than rho 1, that means this fluid is heavier than the fluid which is inside, this fluid will start moving through the inside tube and will start pushing the fluid 1 upward producing a domal geometry. This can be called as a mechanical model of doming or diapirism. This is one of the oldest models. However, recently there has been many other publications where this model can be upgraded. There are several cases of faulting and other structural disturbance that can affect the dome which we are not considering in this case. Now think that this long cylinder has a height of h and this inside long cylinder also has a height of h, capital H. Now you can say if both are of equal height h, then where is the space for the fluid 2 to push fluid 1 and move upward the fluid 1. The answer is this cylinder is of same height, but it is kept slightly up and not touching the basal surface. So that fluid 2 can push fluid 1. Since this height is very small compared to the h value, therefore we represent both the heights of this external hollow cylinder and the internal cylinder of height h. Let us look at how much is the pressure or stress and here comes the matter of stress is exerted by the fluid 1 in this column. So, I can write in this way fluid 1 is given by rho 1 into g into h. Rho 1 is the density of fluid 1, g is the acceleration due to gravity and capital H is this height. And how much is the pressure exerted by the fluid 2 here? The answer is P2 equal to rho 2 into g into capital H. And since I considered rho 2 more than rho 1, therefore I can say P2 is more than P1. From here and from these two equations, I can say P2 is more than P1. So therefore, P2 minus P1 or the pressure difference that will drive fluid 2 inside the internal hollow cylinder internal cylinder is given by delta P is equal to from here I can write rho 2 minus rho 1 into G multiplied by capital H. This is the density difference. So, we can write it further as delta rho into G into capital H. So, we can say that the pressure difference that drives the fluid is equal to the density difference multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity multiplied by capital H or the length of the cylinder. From here, we can further say that delta P divided by H is equal to delta rho multiplied by G. Pressure in another way can be called as stress. So, this is the stress difference that is leading to the extrusion of fluid 1 which is driven by fluid 2. And delta P by H can be called as pressure gradient. So, the pressure gradient is equal to the density difference multiplied by the 
acceleration due to gravity. Since small g is constant, we can write delta p by h is proportional to delta rho. That means greater is the density difference between fluids 1 and 2, more efficient or higher value is the pressure gradient value. This pressure gradient value becomes very important when we further model the extrusion of the dome material such as the extrusion of salt. In the Poissouli flow mechanism, this delta P by H or in the channel flow mechanism, this is given as an input in the velocity profile, which we may see in some other lectures. Now, it is important to understand how much is the delta rho in case of the salt domes in the Persian Gulf. Well, in case of the Persian Gulf salt domes, the density of the limestone can be, I just give a number 2.002 gram per centimeter cube and the density of the salt I write as let us say 2.000 gram per centimeter cube. So, we can see here the delta rho value turns out to be 0.002 gram per centimeter cube which is certainly a very small difference. However, in the geological time span when we are dealing with thousands of years, tens of thousands of years or even sometimes millions of years, this minor difference in density can lead to extrusion of the material. So, in case of the Persian salt domes, this density difference which acted for the last 10,000 years led to extrusion of the salt. So, here in this experiment, we were talking about fluids that there is a fluid 2 here and there is a fluid 1 here, one has a different density than the other. So, one is pushing the other one and then when I gave the examples I talked about salt and limestone. A question may come is salt ductile, is limestone ductile? The answer is over very long range of time it is ductile. In case of the Persian Gulf salt domes capital H is around 10 kilometer just to give some idea how long is capital H. Whereas, this stands as a simple model you can also think of in nature what more things are happening as the salt is extruding here the salt will also be eroded. So, if it if erosion goes on then this basic equation will also differ whereas, this is the fundamental equation if that we add the concept of erosion over here then the equation will also change. So, depending on the natural situation, the terrain, the prototype that you are studying, you have to be careful in applying this equation. A question may come to your mind, what if I do not consider a cylinder with circular cross section? Will the derivations vary or not? Let us have a look. Imagine instead of a cylindrical one, we consider a polygonal body And within that we have kept another polygon and that is empty. So, this has got fluid 2 and within this is fluid 1. We will find that this equation remains the same, there is no change that takes place. The reason is the pressure exerted by fluid 2 on the base will be same as what I have done, the pressure exerted by fluid 1 at the base will be same as what I have already done. Why it is so? Let me explain and this will be a bit deviation from the doming and diapirism, but on this point I want to explain it. How much is the pressure exerted by a body at its base due to its own weight? Let us have a simple thing. Imagine this is a cuboid and which has a height of capital H. This dimension is A length and this dimension is B length. So, therefore, the area of base is equal to A B unit. Therefore, volume of cuboid is A B multiplied by capital H. Therefore, mass of cuboid is given by rho multiplied by a b into 
capital H. Rho is the density of this material. In geological case, the density may vary for a body, but for simplicity, assume that it has a constant density. Therefore, from here we can write weight of cuboid is given by rho ABH rho ABH multiplied by G. G is the acceleration due to gravity. So, this is the force that acts due to its own weight and that acts on this horizontal base surface. Note that force is equal to mass into acceleration. So, this is the amount of mass and this is the acceleration term. Now, stress exerted by this body on this horizontal surface is given by force acting per unit area. So, from here I can write rho ABH G divided by the basal area which is AB and this comes out to be rho into H into G. So, you note that the basal geometry in fact does not come into picture when we calculate the stress exerted by the body due to its own weight. Now, keep this in mind and go back to my lecture where in salt dome case I said in the model there is an there is a hollow cylinder and inside that there is another hollow cylinder then there are fluids 2 and 1 of different densities. How much will be the pressure exerted at the base? It will be rho multiplied by its density multiplied by the height of the column multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity. So, this is the explanation.